Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today, we're joined by Will Brown, who is the Director of Sales Operations at LoadSmart. Will, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. So the first question that I'm quite interested in, not so related to sales ops, is that you actually originated your career, I believe, and confirm me if I'm correct here, in journalism. And then from there, we went to sales and from there, went to sales ops. So this is quite an interesting transition. But first, why the uh, the move from journalism into sales? Yeah, it's a really good one. Um, uh, yeah, no, no, I started um, really in journalism. I, I was just very interested on, on how stuff works, right? Um, you get a chance in journalism to go out doing what you're doing right now, asking a bunch of questions, trying to uh, learn different subject matters. Um, and, uh, ultimately it was a, it was a great job. I loved it a lot. I learned and had amazing, amazing experiences, uh, talk to people that, you know, normally wouldn't get to a normal, uh, normal, uh, walks of life Two presidents. I actually interviewed uh, when I was back in the day, um, at this point. Um, but no, it, it, at some point it's sort of a, uh, a thing where you you typically move up into sort of more of an anchor type of role. Uh, I was never really interested in, in, in that specifically. I liked the kind of the, the the boots on the ground type of thing. Um, so for me, I, I sort of decided to make kind of a, a shift. It's also uh, an absolute grind. Uh, I, you know, a real young person's game if you're going to stay in kind of that reporter uh, role. Uh, so it's I, sales as, as well or, or not so much? It, it really is. But sometimes if you're good at it, you make money. So that, that helps as well. Yeah, got it. That, so, so that makes sense. It it seems like it like there was great learnings and great experience, but actually there was some other things that you prefer to do. How would you say that the the journalism skill set has helped you in sales ops? Oh, absolutely. I think an absolute ton. I mean, it's I think the genuine curiosity that you that you need um, to go out there and try to get to the heart and understand what's happening. I, I think a lot of times things I'm doing. Today's the end of uh, our quarter, for example. I'm going to be crafting some sort of uh, board package, right? I, I need to figure out how to take all these numbers and all these um, these things that are happening within the sales journey and figure out how to tell a story with it, right? And that's so much of what you do, I think, with journalism and reporting in general is you you take a look at um, uh, sometimes very uh, difficult or sometimes even boring subject matter that you need to tell a compelling story with. And I think there's a lot of parallels to that. Um, asking a lot of questions, you're not going to be any good at your job in sales operations if you're not, uh, you know, reaching across the aisle to people in finance, people in marketing, um, BI, all those people asking the right questions. Um, of course, too, just of the the specific sales leaders you're working with um, to really understand um, and get to the heart of what it is they're 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 trying to say. I think all sort of really very, very much served me well. I think uh, transitioning. And now you're saying that it, it does start to make sense. You probably turbocharged your communication skills during your time as a journalist. Clearly, these are you're required to be effective at communication when selling. And then now also you're sharing examples of when communication is actually crucial in the sales ops role. So actually, maybe we should be putting more sales ops people through journalism school. What do you think? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I think that, that you hit the nail on the head, though. I think a lot of the things you need to effectively communicate and, and bring things along, uh, good traits. I don't know. If it's, I think everybody has sort of an unorthodox path, uh, path to uh, sales ops. And then I always find this fascinating, the shift from uh, your role in sales into sales operations, as opposed to just maybe staying in sales and being an individual contributor or even going into, say, sales leadership. What, what made you take the ops route? Yeah, um, it, it, I think it became pretty apparent to me and I, I definitely got a little bit of a nudge there as well. I, I, yeah, I, after journalism, I, I went on to, to kind of actually, you know, uh, being that quota carrying bag holding rep, um, ultimately he was promoted to a, a manager of a smaller territory. Um, but I was doing pretty good. I, I wouldn't say I was the best in the world, but I was doing pretty good for this tiny little uh, geographic region that I was supposed to be managing. And uh, at the time, my, my chief sales officer kind of came to me and said, what's working? What are you doing out there in the middle of nowhere that's, that's working for you so well? And I was like, well, 
And I sort of put probably my sales ops nerdy glasses on. I was like, well, you know, I was digging through Salesforce and I found some historical data and I adjusted my team's targets based on a lot of the segmentation that I was noticing that was working for us from an industry stand standpoint. Um, and then I developed a little bit of a playbook so they knew how to go to market with it and sort of gave them some suggestions as to like how to reach out, maybe the, the, the cadence which they would do that. And he's like, all right, all right, all right. Have you ever heard of sales operations? And so that's... Uh, uh, that's sort of where I, where I stopped with sales and sort of made the leap on the other side of the, the wall there and been doing it for the last 10 years. This is a very common answer to that question. The, the person is performing well in sales. They're f- really interested in improving and making the process better. And then someone from another department or, or, the, or the boss or the leader comes and says, how are you doing this? And then they get pulled into sales office. That makes total sense. This, this question may be a little nebulous. But the the kind of load smart the the, the business um, the the goal stated on the website is to move more with less. How does and this is kind of a nebulous question, but I'm sure you'll be able to give a great answer. Will how does the sales ops function help load smart with this goal? Yeah, great question. So um, just a little context for LoadSmart is essentially what we are is uh, we use AI uh, and hundreds of data sources to automate truckload booking. Um, so analogy we use sometimes to kind of explain it for people is, is you know, back in the day you used to, to you're going to go see your, your aunt in Phoenix, let's say. Um, you used to call Southwest, you used to call uh, American, United, all these different companies try to get a good rate and see what, you know, what made sense for you. We're basically doing the same thing in logistics. There's still shippers out there that um, that have load planners that do this and they, they manually call and call and call and still it's sometimes fax, uh, stuff like that. So it's really antiquated stuff. Um, uh, but, but it's really our goal to unlock things through digitization. So um, we kind of think of ourselves as the nerds in logistics. And so if you think of a company that has a motto to, to move more with less. Could there be a more of a dream job for someone in sales operations um, that sort of embraces this idea of, of efficiency and effectiveness, which is really at the heart and the holy grail of, of what we do in sales operations. So um, for me, yeah, very much a, a great parallel there. Got it. So there's actually, that's the, the mission of the company but it's almost like within the mini company that you have of sales operations, you have a similar mission. And the, although you may be moving different things, um, there are parallels between the two. That makes total sense. Um, could you just share a little bit more about the structure or the current format of the, the sales ops team right now at LoadSmart? Yeah, yeah. We So right now we're, we're a relatively lean and mean team, but um, I think one of the, the stories of LoadSmart is, is we're, we're rapidly growing uh, so quickly. So along with that, of course, uh, we'll, we'll be our sales operations team. So right now I, I kind of very much happy as a, a player coach in, in the role that I have. Uh, we also have a Salesforce administrator and a Salesforce analyst and a uh, little plug if there's any great Salesforce specialists out there looking to uh, make their name and want to hop on this rocket ship of ours. Um, that's 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 how we're currently made up. Of course, if anybody is listening, uh, find Will on LinkedIn, Will Brown, load smart on LinkedIn and ping him a message. And Will, if you do have a job description for that, for any roles, let us know. We'll put that somewhere around this video right. or audio. Makes total sense. Um, could you also share the current sales tech stack you're running? Yeah, so um, the the nucleus, I think, like a lot of people um, that we have is Salesforce is our CRM. Um, we're using a Zoom Info for uh, all of those great you know contacts and, and account data that we that we're looking to gather, um, and then uh, Sales Loft we use as our sales engagement tool, um, and LinkedIn Sales Navigator, kind of uh, the who who we're looking for, who we're trying to find is is I'd say the core of it. There's also other little bits and pieces, but. I'd say that's the core. Awesome, makes sense. What is um since you've been a low smart, what, what would you say is the thing that you've done that has had the biggest impact on the productivity of the reps? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think um one thing that that I uh it may seem like a small thing, one thing that I, I get very I'd say obsessed with is pinning down what, what we believe believe to be our universe of accounts. So uh, we really strive to be like a good customer to buy from, an organization to sell for. Um, but at the end of the day, um, uh, understanding 
um, what the total addressable market is, I guess, to use kind of a finance term, um, is to go out there and identify everything that we can uh, um, to serve up what we believe to be the, the customers with the highest propensity to buy or to, uh, to have compatibility to what it is we do. Um, uh, my goal is that every sales calorie is spent um, at uh, pursuing customers that we think that that make a ton of sense. I mean, there's a lot of ways to to do this. Um, a lot of things we, a lot of little things we sort of massage into the process. Um, obviously, we, we look at uh, segmentation, um, uh, things like annual revenue, full truckload spend, understanding their their industry even a little deeper. A lot of times, I dig into not just industry, but like NAICS codes, the North American uh, Industry Classification System, to really dig deep to see like what. What uh, what are industries that that make sense for us to sell sell through to, but also um, uh, on the other side of our business, what what is easy for them to work with? So that, that customer experience, that customer journey, is not just a customer bringing in that that we think makes sense for us, but also on the back end is someone that we think that we can provide great customer service with, uh, which ultimately has a ton of um, a ton of great benefits uh, to it. So. Uh, I would say like really weaponizing my, my sales team with the right uh, contact lists. It's, it's, it's uh, pretty simple, but I think there's a lot that goes into it and a lot more of a secret sauce that I probably uh, couldn't share here. But, um, but yeah, I would say that's, that's probably one of the things I'm the most proud of. It's, it's, it's an ongoing process to kind of serve them up exactly uh, what they need. So every call has a higher, higher chance of connecting every, account that they they talk to is more than likely not going to say no we we don't do that there's there's two concepts you you brought up in the answer that i really like the first is weaponizing the sales team i think that maybe the title is this episode i think that's a lovely analogy the second one was burning sales calories and this is super interesting so what you're essentially saying here is that the sales team have a finite amount of energy or calories and it's the, your role, the sales ops, to ensure that they're spent most effectively. Yeah, absolutely spot on. I, I, I think that it's not just kind of establishing that universe of accounts that I, I, I mentioned, but it's also uh, constantly being obsessed with qualifying things in, not just taking things from marketing that come in, but also us and sales ops uh, striving for more and more of what makes sense to add to this universe. And then bolding the sales, sales team to really help us disqualify things out. We're not going to be perfect. I kind of call it um, sales operations qualified accounts uh, that we've gone in and, and really tried to put as much science to it as possible. So exactly as I was kind of explaining, yeah, it's it's at every moment they're spending is working on something we think is going to intrinsically bring value back um, through the entire life, the tile, through the sale, through the, the entire, um, you know, customer satisfaction end of, of things. And so, um, yeah, absolutely right. There's a lot that goes into it. And I think you can, um, I think their participation is huge too, as we identify, we're not always right on, on some of those things. They do a great job of removing things from that universe as well. So they're always working on this, again, total addressable market. We think of these are all the customers that we'd love to have. That was really, really helpful. So, so you've, you've essentially added an extra stage into that sort of process where you do have an actual sales ops qualified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Hopefully, it's not something that the sales team even feels. Um, we want to make you know for them the experience you know as easy as possible to sell. And if I can take those things and serve them up to them on a silver platter, as I sort of mentioned, um, they won't necessarily always feel that. But um, I, I think at the end of the day, they they know that there's some work being done when when uh, they're picking up the phone and there's people that that their message resonates with. Um, and not as many of those. No, we don't do that. Sorry, you know that type of thing. Okay. And I've, I mean, I've tried to do a bit of sort of pre-qualification to, to help the sales team and, and to give them the best information to put them in the, the best thing. And I think the main issue I've found with this is, is the turnaround time. How, how quickly can you turn around, you know, a marketing qualified lead to be you know, a sales ops qualified lead? What is your normal kind of, you know, how, how quickly are you working that through? Yeah, you know, I, I sort of look at those things in, in two different channels. Um, I think uh, marketing qualified is, is is one thing. I think we you have to decide. I think with marketing qualified leads, whether or not you're gonna um, own that, massage it, pass it out to sales. Where I, I think that you probably lose a little time when you do that, um, as, as opposed to um, you know, there, there's benefits to going that direction. Obviously, you can sort of enrich the data, get rid of the garbage on their behalf, so they again they know they're doing that. Um, for marketing, we haven't uh, 
I think speed is probably your, your better option there, right? The, the, the faster we can get it to them around Robin going that way. Um, I, I sort of look at the, the sales ops qualified as a completely different journey, a completely different piece that we're um, another channel where we're always, we always have this swath of accounts that we can actively bring in and out on a various, um, you know, two, three month uh, cadence that keeps fresh, good accounts in their name while marketing is also coming through a different channel. Fascinating. Thanks. That, that was really, yeah, really helpful and really interesting. Cool. What have you guys been focused on in the early stages of 2021? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, as I sort of mentioned, it's kind of a rocket ship over here. Um, in, in Q4, I think it was 208% uh, year-over-year growth uh, that we've had. And we just had that $90 million um, uh, round of funding that happened, BlackRock, Maris, some really great companies backing us uh, in November. So uh, uh, with that, we are sort of, um, you know, pushing out new modes. So like uh, less than truck load, rail, partial, some things that you guys probably don't need to get too deep into. But um, with all that obviously comes a whole lot of process planning, new comp plans, uh, you know, adjusting customer targets, perfecting really, you know, the evolving sales motion. So for us, it's very much a story, I think, of scaling right now. And for me, it's it's so much of preparing for preparing uh, what we do and preparing the sales team for for all that, that growth, all that potential. Uh, obviously, always looking to uh, do whatever we can to bring more op- optimization to the, 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 the supply chain. So um, yeah, that's really it for me. It's, it's, it's scaling and growing and, and how do we sort of kind of take all the, the bits to that and sort of stay nimble to react and still provide um, the best service possible to, to sales. That makes total sense. So it seems like 2021 is going to be a bit of a, a journey for you guys. And as opposed to having like more strategic structured focuses, you're going to be just focusing on ensuring that the, the, you're able to continue to support sales as all these new sales reps come into business. Yeah, I think I think that's that's true. We 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 do have you know some very strategic plans and some some different things that we're going to be doing to continue to grow what we're doing in, in our brand in general. And you know, uh, I think specializing our sales team in different areas a little bit more, making it a little bit more of I would say uh, a sales assembly line, if you will. So with that, uh, being able to dig in deeper into very specific metrics. Uh, based on each, uh, I would say, the the cogs of that assembly line. So there's definitely a lot of strategic aspects to it, but but there's also a lot of, uh, it's got to put your foot to the pedal too, uh, as we grow to make sure we're we're, um, growing responsibly. Exactly. Final question. Who in the world of sales ops would you most like to take for lunch? Oh, oh man. Uh, It's a toughie. Um, you know, what would be really interesting, um, uh, is the, you know, was it back in the seventies? Was it, um, J Patrick Kelly, I think was his name it was the first, like sort of credit as the first leader of sales operations. Um, curious, that's like 35, 30, 40 years ago, something like that. Um, what it, I mean, I've seen a ton of my, my career last 10, 12, 13 years, whatever it's been, um, uh, tons of change, and uh, I can't imagine what it would be like to be like in the, the first person in that role, and um, how it's changed over time. Uh, so that'd be a pretty cool person, I guess. This is the first time I've heard of this this person. Do you know which company he worked worked or works for? Xerox. It was Xerox back mm-hmm. in the day. It's sort of it's good to be a historian of what I'm doing, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, but Xerox really started back in the '70s, and I think they initially sort of called sales ops as all the nasty number things. That, that you don't want to do, but but it makes a great sales force. And so um, I think there's been a ton of evolution since then, uh, but uh, I'm sure this guy would have a great perspective. We are going to have to try and find him and bring him on the show, obviously. There you go. This is a great recommendation. Thank you, Will. Um, amazing, Will. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and coming on and sharing everything that's going on at Lodesmart. I, I As I said, the two things that I, the two analogies that I'm going to keep from this episode uh, the the weaponizing the sales team, but then also the concept of the sales calorie, just to, I guess, remind myself and any other sales ops people listening that the resources or the energy of the sales team is not, uh, it or is finite and therefore must be used in, in the most effective way possible. And that really is the role of the sales ops team. So I think that's a lovely little lesson to finish with. Um, Will, thank you for coming on. Yeah, 
You got it. Thanks so much for inviting me.